how are ya? Welcome back to the channel for another sit down, chatty, kind of Q&A focused video. I got this comment on a recent vlog and it was like one of the most liked comments. So it was, it was, it was up at the top and it was essentially asking if I could do like a wedding recap, all my thoughts, things I thought were worth it, things I thought weren't worth it. I was kind of surprised because I truly thought you might be burned out by wedding content by now. I've been trying to not overdo it. Um, so I asked y'all some questions on Instagram. Um, the way I'm going to structure this is I pulled some questions. I think I'm going to start with just some general thoughts that I have, things that I was surprised that I liked, things that I didn't really like, all that sort of thing. And then I divided your questions by like general questions. And then there were a lot of food related questions because we had kind of an atypical food plan for the wedding. And then a lot of questions about having the after party at our house, logistically, if that was worth it, cost, planning, prepping, projects, all that sort of thing. So that's kind of, I'm going to divide the video into four little parts and let's go ahead and get into my overall thoughts. First thing I wrote down is I'm really glad we did all of our speeches at the rehearsal dinner for a lot of reasons. I feel like when a lot of people give speeches at a wedding, if you are a guest, sometimes it can like drag on and on. And I also feel like for the people giving speeches, when it's at the whole wedding, a lot of people get nervous because it's a big crowd. And so the people giving the speeches are like shaky and nervous and all that sort of thing. So we just did rehearsal dinner speeches at the Airbnb, just the small group, basically only wedding party. And that allowed us to A, have as many speeches as people wanted to give because like it's not the wedding there's not a ton of people sitting there watching it doesn't really matter so that was really fun for us b people were very chill like not nervous because it was basically everybody's best friends and family watching it was just like someone would stand up and say yeah i want to i want to say something real quick and i think that made it really special and casual and meaningful and i liked that okay i am so glad because i've done both ways now also if you're new here i am a second time bride so i do have some like comparison between doing weddings one way and another way but this time i'm so glad we did not do like a formal seated dinner and no formal seated dining chart dining charts are the <laughs> like the most intense puzzle basically we did a casual dinner where you go grab your tacos from a taco truck and we had a ton of different seating options. We had tables, we had lounge seats, we had standing tables, we had enough space for people to kind of spread out and like choose their own experience. And I stopped tracking RSVPs like a few weeks before the wedding. We had a ton of people last minute that couldn't come, a ton of people last minute that could come, <laughs> and it didn't matter. I didn't care. There was nothing I had to change. It's like, we have enough tacos. I overshot the tacos. We have enough seats. So um, it's not like I have to rearrange any sort of jigsaw puzzle. And it took a lot of stress off my plate, which I loved. I loved doing a first look. It allowed us to have more one-on-one -on -one time the day of the wedding. Because otherwise, if your ceremony doesn't start till 4.30, like so much of the day, you're apart. So we did our first look, I don't know, like 1 p.m., 2 p.m., somewhere around then. I honestly have no idea what the timing of the day was, but that allowed us a few more hours together on our wedding day. And then it allowed us to all get to hang out together with all the bridesmaids and the groomsmen before the actual ceremony. And I really enjoyed that as well. The one thing I did to make it a little bit different, and somebody gave me this tip, was I didn't wear my veil until I was walking down the aisle so that it was like something a little different, a little extra special that he hadn't seen yet since we had already done a first look in my dress. Okay, instead of confetti or sparklers or bubbles or whatever, we ended up doing paper planes. <laughs> and when I was folding all those planes, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a labor of love. I hope this is worth it. But I didn't realize how much I would love the photos and how much the guests would love it. Like so many people came up to me after the wedding and we're like, the paper planes were so much fun. We had some kids there, they loved it. People loved it and it made the photos really special and I didn't know how well they would fly. I didn't know how well they would photograph, but it all turned out really well. And it was something a little bit different. I have only ever seen one other person do that. I'm sure a lot of people have done it, but it's not something I see a ton on, on Pinterest or online. So it was fun to do something a little bit different, you know? Something we did that we saved money on that I think was so worth the save so we didn't have any sort of DJ. <laughs> we just made our own playlists. I have an advantage having a partner who is a musician and so really has his finger on the pulse. That was fully him. I had nothing to do with any of the playlisting, but we basically had two playlists. We had one for our um, reception, which was more of the like 
dinner, talking to people. It was fully dry, so it wasn't like, and he found a lot of really great oldies um, that were just a good vibe. And then for our after party, it was like the most fun. It was a great mix and it was fun to like really curate the music to our group because sometimes you go to weddings and there's DJs and like they are playing oldies but it's a really young crowd or it's you know a crowd that would love 2000s music and they're playing like modern day pop hits. I don't know. So it was just really awesome to have full 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 control over our song and then save that amount of money that normally would be spent on a DJ. I was worried that if it was a full song, it would feel too long, but it didn't at all. You know how DJs will like switch a song kind of halfway through and like fade into the next one, but it was great. And one last thing that we did last minute go ahead and splurge on that we were gonna DIY is proper bartenders for the after party. And in hindsight, I am really glad we did that. We used, if you're in San Diego or I guess Southern California, I don't know how far they go. They're called the Watering Hall and they have different trailers that they can bring and set up. And I'm glad we did it for several reasons. It took a lot of prep off. We didn't have to prep garnishes and mixers and it took a lot of expense off because I didn't have to buy things I'd use once, like a ton of the like spigot containers. Um, and then lastly, and probably most important, is they have liability insurance. Uh, I feel like alcohol is always a risk. So if anything were to go wrong, we would have that, you know, coverage. And it was a really fun experience for the guests. I think it made it feel like more of a special occasion to have like a full bar set up. You go up, you order from bartenders. They have the knowledge of how to make mixed drinks that aren't just the specialty cocktails. So that was something that I was back and forth on. We were gonna DIY it, but we decided to cut other things. Like we were gonna have a string trio. We cut that, no DJ, cut some things like that and did the bartending service instead. And I think it saved a lot of prep stress. So I'm glad about that. Okay. Those were all of my initial thoughts that I wrote down. I'm talking more than I thought I would. I'm gonna to try to rapid fire as much as possible through y'all's questions so that I get through as many as possible. What was something that was worth the money? Um, one thing that I think was probably the most worth the money is having a wedding planner that was more hands-on and it was the most seamless experience. I know it looks like I did a lot of DIYs. I got a lot of people asking like, was a wedding planner worth it? Cause it looks like you did a lot, but all those things were like, last minute things I wanted to do, special touches like fold planes, et cetera, et cetera. My wedding planner did everything. I had no communication with the vendors besides like meetings to initially talk through my vision. I had nothing to do with like the layout of the furniture. I had nothing to do with the timeline. I just kind of showed up and was just blissfully unaware, told her my vision and could trust her. And to take all of that off my plate and to just trust her. She had a whole team of people. They all had like ear pieces and mics and would just communicate with each other. It was so seamless. I had so many of the vendors come up and say, this was the most seamless wedding I've ever been to because like the team your wedding planner put together was flawless. So that was by far, I think the best expense and you know, a big part of our budget. What feedback did the guests give about the experience? I was asking my mom yesterday, and we'll talk about this a bit more in food. She said the food was so exciting and fun that during the mocktail hour, she overate on sushi and was not hungry enough to eat any of the other food. So I think that I would have maybe not gone so overboard on food to save money, but at the end of the day, I'm also a foodie. So it was fun to have our full food experience in case you missed it was mocktail hour. We had sushi hour. But also for people that don't like sushi, we had charcuterie and like chicken skewers and stuff. Um, and then we had the taco truck for dinner. We had donuts and cake. And then at the after party, we had a ton of pizza, which I think pizza plus alcohol is a good combo because it keeps people from, it helps them, you know, have food in their stomach and not go too crazy. What did you stress about the most? And I'm then gonna answer a question that says, what did you worry about that was ultimately unimportant? So the thing I probably stressed about the most is I think some of y'all caught on to this. My dad and I did a choreographed dance and um, it wasn't like super choreographed, but we don't live in the same state. So we really only got to practice like twice. <laughs> and so I was just stressed about that because there was a lot to remember and a lot that could go wrong and not a lot of practice, but it ended up being cute. It totally was fine. The thing that was, I worried about that was ultimately unimportant. This is advice that I'd for sure give brides and grooms. I was worried about just like some 
drama of people coming, like someone has to see someone. And I'm, I know this happens all the time. People have divorced parents, people have all sorts of things. And it's like, everyone's invited to your wedding. I was worried about keeping all those people comfortable that they wouldn't feel weird about the other people that were there. I was just like worried about them. But then I realized, you know what? It's my wedding. They are choosing to come. They know what they're getting into. It's not my problem. It's not my problem today, at least. People are adults. People are mature. People know to not make it about them. Not always, but most of the time. And in my case, everyone was great and had a great time. So I'd say don't worry about like other people's personal lives on your wedding day. How did you finalize guest count? Just wanted to quickly throw back to not having a seating chart or like a formal seated dinner was life changing for my stress levels. Life changing. And I also think fun for the guests to not feel like they're confined to a table eating for however long. Things that maybe you double spent on because of mistakes. Okay, so something that I did that was a mistake in hindsight was I tried to pay everything in full as quickly as possible. I just wanted to rip the bandage. I didn't wanna look in my bank account and see money that wasn't mine because it was gonna go towards the wedding, you know? But there were a couple things like my hair and makeup that I had already paid in full for my hair and makeup. And then I went to my trial and I ultimately decided I didn't like it. And so I basically told them, I know I've already paid you in full. I'll take the L. I wanna find someone else to work with. And so I basically double paid for my hair and makeup, which is a huge bummer in hindsight. Um, and a couple things like that, like, you know, as we got closer to the wedding, Jordy and I were like, ooh, shoot, we are officially going over budget. I wonder if there's some things we could cut, but we couldn't, cause I had already paid. <laughs> So don't be too eager to pay in full so quickly. And I also learned that vendors don't love that because then they feel like, oh, you paid me six months ago and now I'm kind of working this wedding for free. Even though they aren't, I just have heard that on vendor TikTok. This is not a good brow day. Do you feel like you got to spend enough intentional time together? I do because the first look really helped. And then we had our own private dinner during mocktail hour. And then we went to go change together at the hotel before the after party. And so all of that was just like pretty much one-on-one -on -one time. Of course, there are other people taking photos or whatever, but it felt like a lot of intentional time. And we were adamant before the wedding that we would not get separated. And we did a great job. We were like side by side the whole night. And that was really special to get to say hi to everybody together and to feel like we were like with each other the whole time. Favorite special added touches. So we did a lot of little custom things. The thing, the thing that the guests noticed the most that people came up and was like, that's so cool, were probably the custom pizza boxes. And I'm surprised by that, but I love it um, because I thought that, you know, people would be too distracted to notice our pizza boxes, but we had pizza boxes from a spot called the Ceremony Club. And I said like Jordy and Mikkel's newlywed pizza shop or something like that. And people thought that that was really fun. So I loved that. Did you have enough time to chat with guests? I do think that having the dry, kind of casual dinner reception was a perfect time to talk to guests because there wasn't loud music going, but people were kind of already naturally mingling. So it wasn't like everyone was seated at a table. So I feel like I pretty much, besides a couple people, successfully had a conversation with everyone at our wedding, which we had, you know, a hundred and something people. So it wasn't a huge wedding, but it went, Great. How was it having a dry reception and then alcohol at the after party? Do you wish it was all one event? Honestly, I liked it more than I thought I would have. Some people did say like, by the time we got to the after party, we were like, ready to party. But as someone who doesn't really drink or drink heavily, it was nice to have that not be like such a focus. Then people that don't want that type of environment didn't have to come to the after party. So like my grandparents didn't end up coming to the after party, but they loved being at the reception. I really liked it. And also the, there was only like two hours of the bar being open. So it was enough time for everybody to have fun, but not for it to get like delinquent, <laughs> you know? It was kind of, it was kind of awesome. Did the money you spent on the wedding reflect the quality you were looking for? Um, I will say I did a pre COVID wedding and a post COVID wedding and the cost of everything has just about doubled. This wedding was so DIY, like not a formal venue, not a formal caterer. And it was about the same cost, which is mind blowing that prices have changed that much. So having experience in the way wedding prices were just five years ago versus now, I was shocked at how not far my dollar went. I would have expected looking at my wedding that it cost half, but that's only because I think I'm used to the prices pre COVID. And so I think that this is just kind of the norm now is the wedding industry has basically doubled in expense. <laughs> Let's quickly go through food 
and after party. How did you end up liking the staggered dining? So if y'all don't know, I think I mentioned it actually, we basically had four parts and in order for people to know what was coming in terms of food, we had this like food timeline that was on every chair. So people knew like, okay, don't worry, there's gonna be even more food after the tacos. Or like, there's gonna be sushi, so fun. I don't love tacos as much. I'll fill up on sushi, whatever. Um, and I really, I really liked it. I do think it was probably an added expense doing so much food at the mocktail hour. So I think if I were to do it again and cut down on expense, I probably would have just done less food at the mocktail hour um, because a lot of people did say they were like full before tacos or like only really had one slice of pizza later. Did the taco truck work out? Did it feed everyone in a timely fashion? This was something I was worried about. Also, let's see if I can talk while I do my eyeliner. This is something that is hard for me. A lot of people kind of warned me or gave me the heads up that like people could be standing in line a long time for their tacos. I think it went a lot better than I was expecting and the reasons are only a hundred or a hundred and something people. So small wedding. I think if it was a bigger wedding, that would be more of an issue. Second is it was all prepaid. So there wasn't people having to like give payment, give tip, do all those things that like doubles the amount of time that they're standing in line. Third, we only have four taco options. So it wasn't like a super diverse menu to where they would have to like prep a ton more food. And fourth, I feel like tacos are pretty fast. You put the fillings in, you close them up, you give them to the person. So it was pretty, it was pretty easy. Um, I didn't stand in line personally, but when I looked out, the line was never too, too long. So I'll have to double check with my guests on that, but I think it worked out pretty okay. Do you regret the champagne tower since it fell? Honestly, I like it so much more that it fell because the photos are iconic. Like the glasses flying, the champagne flying. I think it's so much fun. And lastly, what did you use to write on the pizza? If y'all didn't see the photos we did like just married written on the pizza, we just put ricotta cheese in a piping bag. By we, I mean my wedding planner. She did everything. That was something that I had seen on Pinterest that I thought was so cute. And so um, she, she made it happen. And lastly, let's talk about the after party and the concept of using your house as a venue for the wedding. Tons of pros, tons of cons. Um, someone said, what led to that decision? Ultimately, we wanted it to be special and we thought that having people over would be special. We just bought this house and a lot of people have said, we wanna see your house. So we thought, okay, <laughs> let's just show everybody our house at once and that'll be convenient. Honestly, the main factor was cost. So breaking down venue costs, venues, especially in Southern California, are insanely expensive. I got a quote from a hotel and the minimum required spend was $55,000. So our church was $3,000 to rent that all day and all night before. And then our house was free. So we decided to do that. The reason we did the after party at our house instead of everything at the church is the church had to be cleaned up by like 8 p.m. and also had to be dry. And we just wanted, you know, a longer wedding and we wanted a dance floor and bartenders. So we said, let's just do it here, it's free. But what was stressful about it? The things that were stressful about it were keeping it clean leading up to the wedding. That was kind of stressful because I was staying here and I was hosting a family here, but I also, you know, it was our venue. So I didn't want people's suitcases everywhere. I wanted it to be clean. Um, also having Max during the setup here was stressful because obviously I was getting ready for the wedding and I knew vendors would be in and out setting things up and I had this fear of him running out the front door. So my solution to that was hiring someone to be with him all day and that is what I did. Someone's full job was being a Max Wrangler and um, he was fine. He actually went on a couple field trips during the day and then was at the after party all night on a leash so that he could be a part of it and I could kiss him on my wedding day, which was awesome. People asked about the cleanup though, and that was the biggest gift our family could have given us. Of course, our family was asking like, since they weren't really in on the planning process and since Jordy and I pretty much hosted it, family was like, what can we do to help? And my parents house sat for us while we were on our honeymoon and Max sat. And I basically told my parents, my siblings, parent-in-laws, if y'all just wanna like put the house back together after the after party, that is the hugest help ever. And that's exactly what they did. They put everything together, they cleaned up the trash. Um, so that was a great gift from them. We didn't have to worry about it one bit. And I did go into it expecting, you know what? There's probably gonna be a spill on the rug or on the couch or things might break and, 
Um, nothing really happened, which is great. I bought couch covers for our furniture in case there were any spills, but there's definitely a risk of like things can get ruined or broken if you're hosting people in your house, especially if it's a ton of people and if there's alcohol. Did you feel like you had to do a lot of projects before and was that stressful? In some ways, yes, I did feel like I wanted it to be beautiful. And so there were some projects that I didn't get to get to that I wanted more completed. Like I wanted the house a little more decorated or whatever, but the other projects were honestly like long-term beneficial, like stringing lights in the backyard and doing things that we wanted to do to the house eventually. It was nice to have a reason to go ahead and do them. So for like a couple months leading up to it, we would just do a project here or there and kind of get things a little bit more in order. And now we own a lot of things like heat lamps for hosting other things. And so I'm glad that we got to spend the money on our house, improving it to be able to host more things in the future, instead of just giving it to a venue and having access for one night and then never having any other benefit from it beyond that. How did it work with your neighbors? Were they okay with it? The biggest hack that I would say, if you are trying to host a wedding or something at your house, is invite all your immediate neighbors to come to it. So I knew that it was gonna be loud, there's gonna be a lot of cars on the street, probably annoying, would go till probably 11, 11.30. So I sent out a group text to all the neighbors, even though I didn't know all of them, and I said, hey, this is what's happening. It's our wedding. People are super understanding too if it's your wedding. It's not like you're just throwing a party for no reason. Would love to invite y'all, come, have a drink, have some pizza, hang out, like see the house. And all of our neighbors came and they were all super, super nice about it and um, supportive and kind and we didn't have a single complaint. I also lucked out to where all of our neighbors are young and fun and like down to hang. So I could see how it could be difficult if you have a neighbor that is not the type to want to come and party with you, you know what I mean? But if you invite them, then they know what's up, they know what's happening, and if it's your wedding, people are usually really nice about it. And that is all the questions. This ended up being a lot longer of a video than I was expecting. I tried to rapid fire through them as much as possible, but um, hopefully that was what you were looking for in terms of the comment that I got and everyone that liked it. I hope that that's just some honest hindsight as to my experience, I honestly, not a lot went wrong and I was very pleased and I didn't have a ton of like learning experience things from it that I would have done differently. But hopefully the comparison between a couple things that I've experienced is helpful if you are trying to figure out what is worth the splurge versus worth kind of DIYing. These are just my thoughts and experiences, but I love y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me while I get ready. I need to get on my work day. I guess this is kind of part of my work day, but I've got a crazy day ahead. Tomorrow's my birthday, so the next vlog that you'll be seeing will be a fun little birthday vlog. So I'm excited to take you along for that. Okay, I hope you have the best rest of your day, and I'll see you in a video very soon. So let's take all night, all night, all night, all night, all night. If we're looking for each other, then it might just take some time.